Brothers and sisters in Christ, peace be with you. As we read the Gospel for the 21st Sunday of the Ordinary Time, Year B, we practically complete our reading of the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. Although there are still two verses to reckon with concerning Judas and his betrayal, but in general, we have already read the entire sixth chapter of the fourth gospel. It all started with the multiplication of the loaves, with 5,000 men partaking of this miracle. Then it continued on, narrating to us how these people were searching out for Jesus. But Jesus told them about what really these people decide in their heart. He told them, You were not looking for me because you have seen signs, because you have understood what I have done for you, but because you have eaten of the bread. And Jesus now continued to explain, to clarify the meaning of this miracle. As you well know that this clarification elicited from the crowd a not so welcoming attitude to the point that they were quarreling among themselves, refusing the very message of Jesus Christ. But the message of Christ was very clear. Unless you eat of my flesh and drink my blood, you do not have life within you. It's very interesting because while the clarity of the message of Jesus Christ is increasing, the capacity of the people to accept it decreased quite enormously. Expectedly, the Jews would have abandoned Jesus Christ. It was difficult for them to accept that Jesus Christ is the bread of life that came down from heaven, more so to eat his flesh and to drink his blood. We expect that after such an argumentation, they could have left Jesus but today's gospel is quite unfortunate as it is unexpected. We are not talking about the Jews. We are talking about the disciples. We expect these disciples to have understood what Jesus said. They already joined with Christ. They followed Him and we expect them to have already been formed in accordance to the mind of Christ. But even this teaching concerning His body, concerning His blood, was for them too hard to accept. That's why they said, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Immediately, the Gospel writer says, from that time on, they no longer walked with Jesus Christ. Was it because only of the difficulty? The Gospel portrays this group of disciples as murmuring. It was the same description that it gives to the Jews. For such murmuring is a manifestation of the refusal, of the rejection of the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, refusing the message of Jesus Christ concerning his body and his blood redounds to a rejection of living with him, of following him, and walking with him. Thanks be to God, in the very person of Peter, we have a saving grace in terms of humanity's response to this message of Jesus Christ. Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. I think such statement of Peter was not only a romantic statement. It was coming from a heart willing to commit and to stick it out with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, this communion of the body of the Lord is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's a matter of commitment to walk with Him, 
So much so that accepting His body, receiving His blood, would mean that willingness on our part to be taught by Him, to live with Him, and to stay with Him. More than ever, today, we realize that a lot of us are receiving Holy Communion. And that is good. But we also realize that many of us do not understand what this truly means. Namely, that it is a manifestation of our desire to learn from Jesus, to stay with Him, to live in accordance with the life that He has taught us. Accepting therefore His body would mean maturing into listening, into charity, into sincerity, into service. While we receive His body, the Lord also expects from us that we become a witness of the self-giving to this world full of egoism, full of self-centeredness. Every time, therefore, we celebrate this Eucharist, every time, therefore, we break bread, remember, Jesus is asking us, would you like to leave me as well? Our answer should be clear and loud. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Lord, to whom shall we go? You are the only one capable of teaching us a meaningful life and a life full of goodness, full of joy and of peace. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue to pray that our Sunday liturgy may truly transform us into a people willing to commit to Jesus Christ, to that call to be holy, to that call to be good, to be just and charitable. Every time we break bread together, we must allow Christ to speak to us once more, to challenge us so that what we have received will truly become the lifestyle that we live. We pray for one another, pray for us, your priests, that every time we celebrate, we may be willing also to be broken, to be given to you whom we serve. We pray for each other that in your receiving of the body of Christ, you may become his presence wherever you are and in whatever you do. I pray and may the Lord continue to bless us so that this commitment to walk with Him will truly continue in our heart. This is Father Ulrich, the congregation of His Fathers, wishing you the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ.